Welcome to Q to Q, the number one quarterback podcast hosted by me, Josh Coleman. What's going on, guys? I'm back here with an episode of Q2Q. We're finally back, and today we got one of the top class of 2022 quarterbacks out there in Southern California, Shea Kikendall from Long Beach Poly. What's going on, bro? What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's been a lot of stuff going on in the world, man. I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to get back to, uh, you know, getting my shows going. So you know, I've been taking a break, and you know, even on my radar for been on my radar for a long time. So it felt good to finally get back and get, being the first person back for this episode eleven. Yeah, I'm really excited to do this. So I've been waiting to do this. So let's go. Let's get to it. So let's tell everybody, man, what age did you did you start playing quarterback? And you know, what 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 led to the beginning of, of being a quarterback for you? Uh I was a big fan of Peyton Manning and all the Mannings, Eli and all that. So that really inspired me to be a quarterback, but I started playing quarterback at six. I've been playing quarterback the whole, like my whole football career. And yeah. And then, uh, so talk about, you know, where did you play Pop Warner and what are some of the bonds that you created? And what have you learned, you know, in Pop Warner that's helped you today, you know, whether it's being a quarterback or being a better person, a better leader, et cetera? Uh, yeah, so I started playing with uh, the Tri-City Falcons when I was eight and I played with them for two years and then my 10-year-old year, I switched over to Palos Verdes. I played there for three years, I think. And then I finished off my, my Pop Warner with the uh, Carson Seminoles, which were the Carson Ravens before, but yeah. And then uh, I really got a different view of like football from the different programs I played with. Tri-Cities was more spread out for that age division. And then I went to PV and there are a lot of under center doing handoff and like triple option and stuff like that. Then I went back to Carson. I was playing with Coach Ty, and we were doing, we were throwing the ball like 80, 90 percent of the time. Mm-hmm. And I think that that really helped me out as a quarterback, just being yeah. able to develop yeah. that. Quick. And then I know that well, you know, being a part of those systems like that when you're younger definitely helps when you get to, you know, when you get to high school because now you know you're doing a lot of things. Even though we're now the game is changing, but you're doing a lot of things with you know, spread and now you know what to do when you go under center. So I feel like learning that at a young age definitely prepares you for us being, you know, 16, 15, 16, 17 years old. Now you're, you know, more experienced and you know everything. So I feel like that's good that you were, that you were um, able to learn all that stuff when you were younger, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, talk to me about, you know, your freshman, no, I'm sorry, not your freshman, your sophomore year at Long Beach probably. And, uh, you know, just give me a rundown on how the season went for you guys and how you felt the season went for you. Uh, our season, we went, I believe it was eight and three. We lost in the second round against Rancho Cucamonga. Uh, I started against Punahou, uh, Sarah, and Corona Centennial. But overall, I was kind of sharing the job this year. With the senior, right? Makai Jordy? Yep. Mm-hmm. But, uh, how do you feel like that, that, uh, that competition was going? And, you know, what have you learned from, you know, being in that role and, you know, uh, sharing time what have you learned for him from him or what have you learned you took away from the season uh yeah we really we really helped each other we would really always compete and practice we really helped each other out and just that whole situation was honestly very it was very good because it really built myself as a person and yeah yeah i i know my freshman year when i was at uh, st bernard high school and played at Ray, i shared time with a senior I sat behind the senior, but we split time. I, I played a lot that year, and I, 
I definitely say that it helped with my patience. Um, yeah. And it helped me, you know, be a better teammate, be a better leader. Because I know for, for myself, I was a little upset when it was times where, you know, I feel like I should be out there and he was out there. So I feel like that definitely helped me, you know, with being patient and, you know, making sure that when my time comes, you know, I'm prepared and I'm ready to, you know, go, you know, go do what I got to do. So definitely, I think that uh, spending time has definitely helped me as well because my sophomore year definitely helped you know, be a better leader, not a team is mine, you know. So I feel like, you know, you're going into your junior year, we're going to our junior years, the team is, team is pretty much ours. And I feel like definitely spending time definitely helped us, you know, grow and be better leaders for you know, any new incoming teammates or the, the veterans that's already there and things like that. About for the past, I want to say year, maybe you have a different timeline, but I say year. For the past year, you, you're – your name has been been growing out here in Los Angeles and all over the country. And, you know, I know that before this COVID thing happened, your recruiting was taken off. It was a lot of camps you were invited to. So, you know, just talk to me about how the recruiting process has been going for you and, um, you know, how, how that journey's been. Uh, it's been pretty interesting because it's stuff you dream about as a kid. And then now you're at the point where it's starting to happen. And I'm really waiting for junior year because I'm hoping everything will take off after that. But I've started off with a, my first offer from William & Mary. Then I've talked to a few of the, the Ivy Leagues. I was hoping to get out to a few camps this year too, but COVID came in, but it is what it is. So we've got to get next year. And talk to me about, you know, what was going through your mind when you got that first offer, that first William & Mary offer. Talk to me about how that day was going and, you know, what was going through your mind. Uh, it's just a, it's an unreal feeling. I just got back. I was, I was driving in the parking lot with my dad, mm. practicing driving. Then we got back home, we were watching TV and then just heard the news. And it's just, it's an unreal feeling. It's really just, it's awesome. That's crazy because I feel like whenever, whenever I hear the stories about, you know, like when you get your first offer, it always seems like it's, it's very unexpected. Yeah. It seems like you got, you like, so like, they'll be like, oh, I was, I was out doing something or I was working out like it was coincidence or I was cutting grass. It was something that you, you were yeah. doing that day that you didn't expect. And all of a sudden it's a, you get a call from your coach or you get a text like, Hey, you know, you just got offered by, you know, this school, this, this, and that. So I feel like that's pretty cool. You know? And then, so, you know, I know you work with coach Reyes. That's one of my, one of my guys I, I, I work out with from time to time. And, you know, talk to me about how, you know, he's helped you uh, expand your game and, you know, help you grow as a quarterback. Uh, yeah, Coach Ray, he, he's awesome, dude. Uh, he really helped me with my fundamentals, just in my mechanics and everything. And all the training sessions we do, it's really – it's like a game. The game, It's like game speed. It's – you're going to have progressions for each play. And it's not – he's not just teaching how to be a quarterback. He's also teaching you the mind of, like, an OC, like what you're seeing on the defense, what you're going to do when you see it. Yeah, uh, actually, when we had talked yesterday about you getting on the show – he, I, I actually made a tweet and I said, you know, if there's any coaches, you know, that want to see, you know, any quarterbacks on the show or anything like that, I told him just, you know, hit me up. And while we were texting, he actually sent me you, which was crazy. And like, it was like two other quarterbacks, but he actually sent me you. And I just told him, I was like, we're texting right now. I'm about to get him on the episode tomorrow. So that's definitely, a, uh, he's definitely looking out. He's definitely a, a great person to be around and a great coach. Yes, to be around, that's for sure. So, you know, and, and I know you play for premium. So talk to me about, you know, what, what the premium family has done for you. It's a big, Big 707 organization out here in California. Talk to me about how they've helped you grow and, you know, the bond that you build with your team. Uh, yeah, I think Premium really helped me out with reading defenses. Actually, all the 707 circuits really helped me out grow as a quarterback in terms of, like, understanding defenses and everything like that. And the exposure with Premium is awesome. You really get your name out. And then what do you say – who would you say are some of your, you know, your top – your top guys, top bonds that you built from that from that program. Uh, definitely on my team was uh a re like receivers Josh Johnson, uh Trevor Voss. Let's see. Oh, uh, Michael Greer. Mm, definitely Michael. That's my. You said San Jose State, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's my guy. I definitely got to got to chop it up with him for sure. Yeah. So um, you know. Man, I know you know you missed on a lot. You missed out on a lot of camps this this off season. What yeah. would you say is one of the camps that you wish you would have attended? Because I I actually got to go to Elite Eleven camp, and I know that you got invited. 
and I know that you felt like you you really wanted to be there. So, would you yeah. say that's the that's the camp that you probably wanted to attend the most? Yeah, I was I was gonna go to the one in New Orleans, and I was I was really excited for that, but got canceled. So, I a little regret not going to the Los Angeles one, but it's all good. That was cool too. It was. I'm, I'm glad I got to go to that before you know everything shut down. That was. I think that was the last. Yeah, that was the last camp I went to before everything shut down. But you know, it's 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 a blessing that you got an invite. I'm pretty sure you'll be back next year. And uh, you know, I just see you taking off even more. You know, the one wing Mayor, you said you got a few interests. I just see you blowing up after this season for sure. I know that you guys are you know bound. You guys are always one of the top teams out in Southern California. Probably is always a the top program, so I'm definitely going to be blowing up for sure. I, I see it taking off already for sure. Yes, sir. Hopefully. So, you know, what are some of your expectations for next season? What are some of your goals that you want to accomplish and that you want for your team? Uh, for team, no doubt, is win, win CIF State. That's just a no-doubter. Our whole team is was pretty much juniors last year, so we got a whole team returning. This is the time to win CIF if we can. So, And then for me personally, Probably over 2,500 passing yards for sure. And I've def I worked on my speed and agility this offseason, so I really want to build up my, my rushing stats too. <laughs> That's pretty good. I've seen in some – I think it was some of the game. I forgot what game it was on each yard, but I seen you out there breaking tackles and bouncing off of defenders. I was like, man, yeah. <laughs> this dude can actually move, man. This dude's nice. So – I'm trying to see because have you seen your schedule yet? Have you guys seen your schedule yet? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you know what game are you looking forward to the most? Probably Sarah. Sarah mm -hmm. for sure because we barely lost them last time. What was the score last time? What was the score last year? It was, ooh, what was it? I'm pretty sure it was 26 22. And we had the, we just barely lost. I need that game back. Are you guys playing that poly this year? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Playing out of bets. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. That should be a, a good game to watch. Definitely. If I, if I have a bye week, I'll be there for sure. But that's pretty much it, man. To wrap it up, Shea Kuykendall, top 2022 quarterback. 2022 quarterback. Thank you for getting on the show today, man. I'll, I'll definitely reach out to you. You definitely got to get a workout in or something, man, while this whole bunch of stuff. I, I'm pretty sure we'll be off, off lockdown soon, but, you know, definitely got to get some working with you and, uh, you know, I'll be watching you this season, and I'm pretty sure you'll, your name will continue to grow, and I'm just I'm ready for you to ball out this year, for sure. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Let's get it.